I am on a mission over the course of this year to visit all of the top 10 theme parks in the UK, specifically this list of 10 theme parks. Today, we're at Drayton Manor. We have been here before a few years ago. It didn't necessarily end well. That was more to do with our circumstances than the park though, but today we are giving it another go. Drayton Manor is the home of Thomas Land. They also have a zoo that I don't think we're gonna be able to visit today because Andy is with us and he is not a massive zoo fan, but trains are good and there's lots of train stuff in here. So we're gonna go and have a look. And we are in now. I don't think we've been here since the pandemic. So the last time we came, we had a little bit of a problem with getting into Thomas Land, which is just there, but they had a big queuing system around. Which basically led to Andy having a meltdown and it all going badly wrong, but all of those restrictions are now done. So we should just better go straight into Thomas Land. I wanna go and see my bird as well. There is a bird that I like that's near the Thomas the Tank Engine train. And then we've also got the whole of the rest of the park that's not the Thomas themed part as well. So lots to do, but it looks like we're making a beeline straight for Thomas Land which is only to be expected because Thomas Land is great. So when you first come in here, it is all brilliantly themed for Thomas the Tank Engine. This is the train that runs from here through to the other side of the zoo. So we get to have a little look at the zoo, even though Andy doesn't like to go into the zoo. So we'll ride that train, hopefully later today. It says opening soon, which is alarming. Tell me that's not closed today. <laughs> No, I'm sure it'll be fine. It's just not open for the day. We are in early, so hopefully it's just not open for the day yet. But that takes you out of Thomas Land anyway, so we've got all this other stuff to do before we ride the train anyway. And he doesn't seem too concerned just yet. I don't remember that being there last time. That's cool, named after all the different trains. And then we've got Thomas the Tank photo. Is this Thomas here? I always get confused and people get upset. That's not Thomas. He's got the wrong shaped nose. Andy, who's that? Who's that? Edward. I don't know how he knows. It's just a blue train. To me, that's Thomas. And then, do we have a Thomas photo opportunity? And he's bringing us around here for the rest of these. I have no idea, no. Toby. I know there's one called Kevin. Is Kevin about? So I got a little Kevin from the shop last time. Is this Thomas? Oh, no. Who's this one, Andy? James. That's James with the freckles. Okay. And then we've got the shop there, which no doubt we'll go into the shop a little later on. Who's this? Gordon. Gordon. Okay. He's saying Henry. Is this Thomas here? Or is this the wrong one again? Oh, we've walked all the way around, have we? Okay. Tidmouth Sheds? Okay, fair enough. All right, and I think we're now being brought over here while Andy's waiting for the train to come in, which hopefully, hopefully is running or else we're gonna have a disaster. Yeah, you go and ask. I think this is the way you get in, actually. Right, we've just double checked and been told the train is running at some point today. So, fingers crossed, we should be fine. They've just got to do a couple of repairs or something to it. All right, we've, uh, we've left Thomas Land for now. While we wait for Thomas to be up and running, there is another train that's over this way that runs on this track, the Polpero Express. So I think we're gonna go and see if that one's running. Failing that, it's not as if we're lacking for for rides and things to do in here, including Pokemon. Hurrah! Lovely old stuff. All right, I think we've got a train here that we can go on, so that is a result. Last time we were here, I don't think this one was running. We've been here a couple of times. I'm sure we've been here once and it wasn't running, but it's running today. No queue, which is always a good thing. We're here early July, so not summer holidays yet but prime school trip time. So there's gonna be lots of school trip groups. There was loads of coaches in the car park. The, the car parking, no problem at all. Coach parking, heaving. So uh, yeah, gonna be lots of groups of kids here, which theoretically 
should mean Thomas Land is less busy because I think school kids are less likely to go in Thomas Land. So it's not cool, maybe. I'm at the front, so I'm officially driving the train. As you can see, Excellent. they are behind me. I'm not just on this on my own. I would, but I'm not. Of course, the problem with being right in the front is it is very loud being right next to the engine. This train is great because it gives you a great little tour of the, uh, at least of this side of the park, which is, which is really, really cool. When you first get here, just get to have a look around this side, and then the top of the train gives you the tour of the other side, which is doubly cool. Hopefully, we can jump on the Thomas one now. It looked like Thomas was in his station, so I think the plan is now to head over there for that one. But before we head over to Thomas, of course, Andy is going to take us round to the level crossing so we can watch that train go past with the next set of passengers. noise that they play to let you know that there's a train crossing is a really lovely noise. Oh. Right, I think we're heading to Thomas now. Waiting on a bench. Other level crossing. It'll be a couple of minutes to loop round. I think it's like a five minute loop, so we've got a couple to wait before he'll jump up and watch it go past. And here it goes. We were in position with loads of time to spare. Once again, we have that lovely noise. Now, I think the plan is Thomas Land, maybe. Shows what I know, because Andy's plan was actually, it's a little bit overcast today and he wants to go and put his trousers on. So we're now going to find a toilet so he can get changed into his long trousers that he's got with him. Which does mean we've ventured into this part of the park that we probably wouldn't have wandered towards otherwise. So we can have a little look at what we've got up here. There's another shop, the Thomas 4D Land. There is the zoo that there'll be no persuading him to go into. He's had a bad experience in there before. The zoo is great. I'll see if I can dig out some, some footage from the zoo from trips in the past that I can just overlay this while I'm talking, but the zoo is up there. And actually the Thomas train takes you to the other side of the zoo. So we get to see a little bit of as we go past. Anyway, I'm sure there's toilets around here somewhere. This is where the signpost has sent us, but he is, uh, he's cold. It's not a massively cold day, it is July, but as you can see, he's got his coat on and he wants his long trousers on as well. It will get hot and want to take them off again in an hour. This is a problem with bringing clothes choices with us. Trousers on, he's now decided because it's hit 12 o'clock on the dot, we have to go and find lunch. So we're now trying to find somewhere to eat lunch. For him, that's easy. He's got crisps with him. Uh, me and Anna need to find somewhere that serves food that humans can eat. It's all burgers and hot dogs and I know I've had my gallbladder surgery now but <laughs> don't necessarily want to fill myself up with burgers and whatnot but we're going into the burger kitchen by the looks of it. He want, Andy wants to go somewhere indoors. He is not warm today. Lunch consumed. That was, uh, it was okay. We had, I had a fish burger and fries. Anna had some fries and uh, yeah, it might have been chicken. I asked for fish, it might have been chicken. I ate the whole thing and I'm still not completely sure. Um, and then a couple of Cokes and a coffee and it cost 25 pounds. It's so expensive, but it was fine. But be aware, as it is at all theme parks, so expensive. I think the, the fish burger, chips and coffee value meal was 14 pounds, which is madness. I think Andy's going up here now. So we're not actually uh, venturing that far. He's going to be going up and riding on this, which I don't think he's been on this ride before. But it looks like you go in over here. Um, I'm not going on it, am I or am I? 
Can I go on it? Is it full size? I thought this was just a little kiddie's ride. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm going on it too. And I am in and riding on my own. Oh. Seems like I'm getting commentary on the way around, which is not ideal. There they are, in fact. So the reason I'm on one on my own is because there's a maximum of two adults per ride and they clocked that Andy was over 18, which is the first time that's ever happened in a theme park or anywhere else for that matter. So I've had to ride separately, which is fine. It means I get to sit in the front, which I wouldn't have done ordinarily. Another interesting thing is a couple of teenagers got turned away because you're not allowed teenagers in Thomasland on their own. He said they'd have to come back with their teacher. So uh, that's good. If you want to come on a day like this when it's the end of term and you're worried it's going to be full of school trips, they ain't going to be in Thomasland is awesome so big thumbs up on there for the uh for the view of everything what is are we supposed to be in here okay so big thumbs up for the view from up there getting to have a proper little look around thomas land bit of a shame we couldn't all go on the same one but i guess that's what happens when we're in a children's theme park and all three of us are now adults my phone oh it's actually thomas Hold on. Actually, Thomas the Tank Engine. We've found him finally. Go that way a bit. That's it. Ready. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And it looks like this way out takes us into the world's largest Thomas Land shop. Which, I mean, that's a very specific thing to be the world's largest at, but it is a cool shop. We've been in here before lots and lots of Thomas accessories and merchandise, as you would imagine. It is a big shop. <laughs> as you've already gone straight in a tunnel. Excellent. I mean, look at the size of this shop. That is, uh, that is enormous. They've got every character from Thomas that you could possibly imagine in here. All the DVDs. Puzzles. You had what? You had them all on VHS. Wow. And then over here, you've got all of the uh, all of the different characters. There is Kevin. For those of you who doubted that Kevin was a Thomas character, there he is. Uh, no, Andy or Anna. So I win this round. And then just loads more cool stuff over here. It's all awesome. So next stop is finally. The Thomas train at Knapford Station. That's 20 minutes. Which is apparently a 20 minute wait. <laughs> I like this because it's a proper station. And it looks awesome. And we are going to be right at the front of the queue even though it's a 20 minute wait. Which is also awesome. And here comes Thomas. There he is, look. Having a little look around. It always looks shifty, that train. So now we get my favourite bit of coming to Drayton Manor, which is getting to watch the train uncouple and go up the other end. Which we see better at the other end, because you can go down to the turntable, but I think we should still be able to see it down that end here. It's the best bit. They loaded us onto the train before we got to watch it turn around, so <laughs> I'll have to watch that at the other end. But at least we're on, although I think I'm facing backwards, so I need to swap myself yeah, yeah, around. Here he comes. <laughs> and now we just wait for the poof when it connects up with us, and we're off. And we are away. I'm not at the front of this one though, so I can't show you me driving it, but I can still show you what we're going past. This is basically going to give us a tour of the other side of the park that we haven't really seen yet. But first, it's taking us around the back of everything. I think, I think we go past the zoo area. I hope we do. So I do like an animal. Andy is determined to not let me see these animals or let me see the train turn around. He just wanted to stay on 
luckily they've made us get off. That's where it turns. I don't think we're going to get to see it because I think he wants to loop straight back round, join the queue and get back on again. We're dangerously close to the zoo for his tastes. Andy, are we going to watch the train turn around? Yeah, back Okay. Andy, we can watch from here. Where are you going? Sorry. No idea where he's going. Oh, he's watching it from over there. There he is. And oh, there's Thomas. Actually, I might wander over there near him and get a thumbnail. Andy, just look into the camera and smile. Andy, look, look up there. In there, in the camera, look. Here, thumbs up. Yeah. Here he comes. See, this is my favourite bit of the whole trip. Thomas giving us the eye. And then... We get to see it turn around. What a wonderful thing. Here he goes. <laughs> see, that pleases me greatly. I am a nine-year-old boy. And I'm not ashamed to admit it. Wonderful stuff. Right, what I can see is they are loading the train back up at the other end. So I think if we're going to avoid another half hour or so wait, Andy seems pretty keen to try and get on this one now. I want to see all the birds. They're actually running. I don't think they realise the train isn't even coupled up yet. I don't think there's a. Re I don't think there's any reasons. You know the train's not even coupled up. You don't need to run. <laughs> I don't know if there's any space on the train, but there's certainly no logic behind uh, racing. Yeah, we didn't manage to get on that one. We had a little bit of a wobble with Andy until we reminded him that not being on the train means he can uh, come over here and watch from this crossing, which is what he's going to do now, which is much better than even being on it. Right, you can't go over there. You have to stay over here. Now he's your face. That is a face. There you go. I've managed to see my birds as well. They're over there. Excellent birds. I don't even know what flavour of bird they are. If you know, let me know down in the comment section. So I'm not going to get over there to look at the sign, but I'm watching them from here. And that makes me very happy. Long necked birds are great. Oh, it's a third one. Wonderful stuff. Uh, there's a train Close here. Feet. What a place. And there we go. Now we need to go and try and reclaim our spot in the queue that Anna's been holding for us. And hopefully there's not a load of grumpy people behind her who are going to object us pushing back through. We are back on again. Ready to loop back the other way. But first, another look at the birds over there. Well, that was marvellous. I think start to finish, that was an hour and a half. We were messing around on that with all the waiting times. Andy, we need to wait for Mummy. Yes, you can see Edward while we wait for Mummy to emerge. Because me and Andy, as we do, just charged off, leaving Anna to uh, carry Andy's bag, get her stick, get off the train on her own. She all looks impressed, look. Buggies? Oh, I thought it was you who was getting stuck somewhere or something. <laughs> We've uh, got a fat controller there, although he's not called that anymore. Sir Topham Hat, apparently. Excellent. Uh, we've hit a slight snag in the day because Andy's carers have decided to empty everything out of his days out bag that he's had for years. So we've already run into the problem of his noise ear protectors. They're not in there and he needed them earlier. And, and now, now his phone is out of battery. 
and his charging block and charging cable are not in there either. I know we should have checked on this before we came, but we know it's just stuff that's always in there because it always has been. Uh, neither me or Anna carry lightning cables because we can both charge wirelessly and we've got a wireless charging block. So I've got to walk back to the car and grab what well, I hope there's going to be a lightning cable in the car so we can charge him up off my power block um, while Anna takes him on some rides. So these are any shots that Anna managed to get on the rides and then hopefully I've got a power cable for him. You've been a good boy, okay? Yeah, I've got a video. <laughs> oh, then, good boy. Hold on tight. Oh. <laughs> Bye. Well, I am back in, and as you can see, or you could see a second ago, Anna is filming him. So, fingers crossed, we've got some nice little Anna shots of what they got up to while I was away. Andy, Andy, you can twist it. That's it. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what's going on over here. I think uh, old Sir Topham is having a good old sing song on top of the station. There he is, look. Having a lovely old time. You were brilliant. Oh, that was fantastic. Anyone certainly like joining in with that one. Oh, yes. We're, uh, he's so loud. We're on our way out of Thomas Land now. Andy wants to ride some of the other rides, so we're heading that way. But the speakers are so loud. <laughs> he is not waiting at all. But I think he's got his eye on that uh, spinning swing ride thing. The wave swinger. He loves that at Wicksteed Park. So any excuse to get on one of those. So I think that's our next destination, which does get us into another bit of the park that we've not really explored today yet, where they have a surf shack, a load of Minecraft <laughs> toys that you can win and various roller coasters that, I mean, we're not really roller coaster folk, but there's plenty in here. It's not just the, uh, it's not just Thomas Land and a few trains. This is a theme park where you could definitely come and spend a day, especially at this time of year, because the opening hours, the park opens at 10 and then rides open at 10.30. And then despite the fact that it's July, the ride stops the day at 4.30. I think they have a separate ticket that opens up for the evenings, but it's separate ticketed entry. So just a day entry is just for those 10.30 till 4.30 hours. The price for that, we booked a week in advance, and I think it came to about 25 pounds per person. And they now having to pay full adult prices. And then we paid, I think six pounds for parking. And we also paid an extra two pounds per ticket for rainy day guarantee, which Thankfully, it doesn't look like we're going to need to use, but they have a policy where if you have the rainy day guarantee, if, you, uh, if they get more than four millimetres of rain on your day in the park, you automatically get issued a new ticket to come back on another day. So, because Andy hates rain as much as he does, if it did start to rain properly, we would just have to go home. So that's a really cool extra feature that I've not seen a lot of parks do. And it's one of those things where it's like any insurance. You don't want to have to pay for it. But if you have to, if you get a situation where you have to claim on it, you're glad you had it. So, all in the the day, including the tickets and the parking, has come to just over hundred pounds for the three of us. Which, when you compare it to somewhere like Alton Towers or Fort Park or Legoland, is pretty reasonable. I think certainly a lot cheaper than it would be to come at the height of the summer holidays or to just turn up and pay on the day. So I do recommend booking in advance. One other thing worth bearing in mind though is they have changed the way they do accessibility tickets here when we've come previously. It's just been a case of going to guest services, presenting them with evidence that he's disabled and they will then provide us with an accessibility ticket which gets you to the front of the queues. It doesn't work like that anymore. You actually have to apply for a specific accessibility pass on their website. You have to do that at least a week in advance. By the time we booked, it was only like five or six days in advance. We didn't actually have time to do that. So we've not done an accessibility ticket today. It's not a big deal on a day like this because we've just been able to walk straight onto any ride. It's not particularly busy, especially over in Thomas Land. But it's definitely something to bear in mind if you want to come in the school holidays when queue times do get long, 
if you need an accessibility ticket, you need to give it that week at least in advance to get that in place. Otherwise, you are going to be queuing and there's nothing you can do once you get here on the day. So definitely something to bear in mind. Anna's made a rookie mistake and left me unattended for a bit. And there is a shop here that sells loads of superhero stuff. So I think we're going to go and have a little look in here and see what we've got. What we've got is actually quite a small shop, but this is what I'm interested in. I might get myself some uh, some superhero fists. Or a, uh, I mean, these are actually quite cool. I don't know what relevance they have to Drayton Manor, but they are cool all the same. The rest of the shop actually a little bit smaller than I was anticipating, so, so we'll leg it out of there and come and see what Anna's up to. What are you saying? Oh, he's just ignoring you, he's busy. <laughs> and as usual, if you're struggling to pick out which one Andy is, he's the one with his arms out. Although actually, to be fair, for once, there's two of them with their arms out. So he's not actually the only one. But he is definitely in his pose. I think these are his very favorite rides that are available anywhere. He loves a, uh, a swing rider. So next up, I think he's heading for the carousel. This carousel, specifically. I don't know if Anna's going on there with him. Are you going on it? Then I will go and try and win a, uh, a Squirtle then, I guess. God, no, I won't, not at that price. Two in to win, three pounds for one game. 10 games for 20 pounds. Do you reckon if I just like, give him 20 pounds, don't let me bring a Squirtle back with me. As usual, they're sat in one of the little carriage things. There they are. Weirdly, unlike on a normal carousel, and for such a noisy theme park, there's no actual music playing on the carousel, which is a bit of a weird disconnect. Normally, you'd expect carousel music to be playing. It just seems a bit odd. This ride, by the way, seems absolutely bonkers. Because not only does it swing like that, but it also spins. Either of those sensations are going to be enough for me to bring up my fish slash chicken burger that I had at lunchtime. But the two of them together, I think that'd finish me off. I don't know. Does it, does it go all the way over the top? It looks like it's shaping up to go all the way over the top, which is even worse. I am too old for that. That's for sure. So we are now venturing back into the other side of the park. You can see the toy shop the 4D Thomas thing is over there and I think it's because he's got his eye on another swing ride that he spotted from a mile away which doesn't look like it's running but maybe it is as I thought it is the flying Dutchman that he had his eye on but it looks very closed closed yeah fair enough so while Andy is going back on the swing ride again Anna has sent me off to explore over here because we've never been down this way before and I don't know if there's something down here he'll enjoy but either way probably should show you what's down here already know I'm not going to get into the zoo today but this is the Vikings area which I can't believe we've never been in before because this looks awesome completely different theming to what we had in the main part of the park it's like walking into a completely different theme park there's a uh, a roller coaster over there. So that's uh, yeah, a roller coaster there. Then you've got this weird contraption in front of me, which I think spins in all sorts of different directions. You've then got this hybrid of like a, a spinny thing and a pirate ship and a roller coaster, all kind of mushed in together. It looks like you kind of squat down on and then it moves in all sorts of different directions. This is a cool little area that I never really knew was here. This looks like uh, there's another roller coaster here. This might be one for the little ones. I can't read the font. What does it say? The Slipnir? Might be what that's saying. Valhalla food and drinks over here. And then I think we get as far as this, and that's the end of this little area. But that, I mean, even this, 
little Viking barbecue, which I imagine is open this summer. Yeah, so this ride there was little horses going around the track, so a little kiddie version of a roller coaster. And then we've got an actual Viking over there. Should we go and see the actual Viking? So, here we have. He's smaller than you would think. I tower over him. An actual Viking. I always thought Vikings would be bigger. But that was the Vikings land area of the thing. Oh, so this ride is called Thor. The big pirate ship spinny thing. So that's Thor, Loki was over there. This is cool. I like this a lot. I think that just takes you up to the back entrance to that ride. So I'm not gonna head around over there. I'm gonna head back out of this bit of the park. But I don't think there's anything in here that Andy would particularly enjoy, but it's uh, certainly somewhere where a slightly younger, slightly slimmer version of me would be interested in some of these. Less so these days. You also get a pretty good view over here of some of the other rides. So over here, we have the accelerator, which looks like it just shoots up there really quickly and then probably comes back down again. There's a pirate ship over the other side of the lake. And then you can also get a decent view of some of these wet rides that do get you proper wet. That log flume kind of thing, you can see that one's just coming down now. It creates quite the splash. The train we were on goes under that and you get wet on the train. So I can't imagine how wet you get on the actual ride. And there's a uh, there's rapids over there as well, which people were coming off that absolutely soaked. What I'm getting at is that I don't want people to watch this video think that this is just Thomas Land and there's nothing here for adults or older kids. It's a very, very cool theme park suitable for the entire family, but on a smaller scale than somewhere like Alton Towers. You can walk from one side to the other in three or four minutes probably. And because of that, it's quite easy to split off from the rest of your group, wander around on your own for a bit and go find them again relatively easily. I like it here. He's back on that again. So just while he's up there, take a minute to show you maybe one of the reasons why people are coming off this ride as wet as they are because it has to pass through this. It's like a tunnel of water. So you come down there and then through this tunnel of gushing water and then eventually you get thrown down. But even that bit, I mean, the splash off of there just for that small drop and there's a bigger drop. And you can see from how wet it is on the floor all around, how far beyond the, the actual waterfall, people are still getting wet. I've just wandered down into this area just to show you this. So this seems like more of a Wild West themed area. So there's your entrance to the River Rapids. We've got the Hillbilly Shooting Gallery, something going on up there, another roller coaster here, another place to eat that apparently does something called Funky Fries. And like I was saying before, it's all so close together that you can still see Thomas Land from all the way over here. Thomas Land is just the other side of the swing ride. The Viking area where I was before, just the other side of the lake, you can see it through that ride. It's all really cool and compact, but still enough here to keep you amused for an entire day, even on a day like today, where we've not had to queue for anything. It's three o'clock now, we've been here a good four hours. We've not had to queue for anything, and there's still loads we haven't even done. So. Imagine on a summer's day when you're queuing for half hour, 45 minutes for each ride, there is plenty here to fill a full day. So one last thing to do before we head home, because you can't come for a day out at Thomasland and not buy a souvenir in the big shop. Let's go and have a look to see what we can purchase. I was hoping they'd have another bigger, maybe Kevin, but that seems to be the only Kevin in it. And I've already got that one from a couple of years ago. This is the, uh, the Thomasland exclusive. And I do tend to like exclusive merchandise, but I don't know what I'm going to do with a massive plush Thomas the Tank engine. So they've got Rosie as well, which I think is also exclusive down there, the pink version of Thomas. But yeah, I don't think there's anything for me to purchase unless I get myself a half price when I spend £40 set a Topham hat. Yeah. What's he after? Yeah. What's he got? What is that? He wants a massive train set. Dare I ask how much that is? 
Holy smokes. I mean, there's something over there that's 125, so you've got off a little bit lightly. Apparently we wanted that first. How much is that? 80. Yeah, there's some expensive stuff Where's in here. Gone? It'll be okay. through that tunnel again. Yeah, I don't think I'm getting anything this time, which I suppose is fair enough as a 40-year-old man. Purchase complete. Andy was very briefly carrying it, but I can see Anna's got it now. Come on, give it here. I'll carry it. <laughs> Big, heavy train set box. And that does bring us to the end of our Drayton Manor video. As mentioned at the start, this is part of a playlist where we are trying to get round the top 10 UK theme parks over the course of this year. Um, the list is there. You can see it, I can't. I trust Future Kev is gonna put the list in. Um, let us know which one we should go to next. Which one is your favorite? And is there any on the list or not on the list? It should be on the list that we need to try and squeeze in as well. But if you have enjoyed this one, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on it. It really does help to let us know that you like this kind of content. Subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on so you don't miss out on the rest of this playlist. And maybe check out some of the other travel videos on the channel while you're there. And thank you very much for watching.